Okay, so you've struggled through the tutorials, you've figured it out, and you finally have your brand new Reset Glitch console, or JTAG console, uh, or Reset Glitch 2, or RJTAG. Any of those would be able to use this guide. This is to help you get Freestyle Dash, FSD, and Dash Launch installed and working on even the latest 16537 dashboard. I'm going to post a link or a torrent or something to the image, the ISO file of this CD. All you have to do is burn it with any normal burning application, image burn, Nero, whatever, to a regular CD. And then obviously you do have to have a unsigned code console, which means reset glitch, reset glitch 2, JTAG, RJTAG. Um, any of those, this is going to function. So the first thing we need to do is figure out where we're going to install Freestyle Dash and Dash Launch. I don't have a physical hard drive attached to this console, so I'm going to go ahead and use a brand fresh formatted 4 gig um, USB card. So I'm going to insert that into the console, and then on the system itself, it should recognize that I've inserted the device. So there we go, detected storage device. So now when I go into storage, we can see my USB storage device. Now this would work the same if you have a two terabyte USB external. What I prefer and recommend is to use the customize option and then to give some small portion of this to USB storage. Um, so what this is saying is how much of this storage do you want to be available to the Xbox 360 for like game saves, DLC, that sort of stuff. Because I have such a small device, I'm only going to leave one gig available for that. So the other three gigs will be available to Freestyle Dash for that sort of stuff. In the case of like a two terabyte external, you could actually leave 32 gigs available to the Xbox for game saves and stuff. Uh, and then the rest of the hard drive would still be accessible to Freestyle Dash. And that's what I strongly recommend because you'll, you'll want that space for all of the games that require installs and stuff now. So we're going to hit configure. It's going to take 30 seconds or a minute or something to do the configuration. And it's probably going to tell me something about the performance. That happens to me a lot. And these devices still work perfectly fine. If it tells you it succeeded, but the performance isn't quite good enough, um, just ignore it. It doesn't know what it's talking about, quite frankly. Because you can stream games off of the USB and it's way faster than streaming them from the disk. Okay, so there's our me memory unit with the gig of memory accessible to the console. So now I'm gonna go back out all the way to my home and I've got the disc image burned to a regular CD. I'm gonna go ahead and close the tray. So what we should see here is the normal play game option in just a moment. And when we launch that play game, we're going to get the automated installer. Now I've updated this particular installer to be different. It installs the Freestyle 3 Revision 775, which is the latest version or last version. It also has the Dream Theme 1.5 uh, already in the skins directory, so you can modify that. And then it's been updated to Dash Launch 3.0.8. So I'm gonna check the box for installing configuring Dash Launch. If you had a physical hard drive that you were installing this on, the hard drive option would appear over select device. Since my only option is the USB, that's all that's going to appear there. So I'm going to go over to and choose to start installing and hit select. And now it's going to take a while to extract all of the files. I'm probably going to speed up this process because um, it, it really does take quite a while, especially with the addition of the dream theme file that I added in there. It's like an extra 150 megabytes. Um, I just barely got the CD size so that it could do, be done on a CD under 700 megabytes. So this process of extracting all the files can take upwards of five or six minutes easily. Um, so just be patient and wait through it.
Okay, so we're really close to the end here. This last portion will actually take the longest. These .xzp files are the skins, the default one, and then you'll see the dream theme extract here in just a moment. The way this percentage bar works is it works by the count of the files rather than the actual size or estimated time. So these last two files, this last 2%, will probably take longer than the first 60% did by themselves. So we're just waiting for the final skins to extract and be placed onto the USB. This could be faster or slower for you depending on the speed of your USB drive, the condition of your DVD drive, that stuff. So just be patient. All right, so we finally finished with the extraction of the freestyle dashboard, which took the longest. Installation is indicated as complete after it did the dash launch, so now we have the continue button. So we're going to go ahead and hit A for the continue. We're going to be immediately prompted with dash launch. So the first thing that we want to do is go into our path and then make sure that our default is set where we want freestyle at. So the USB freestyle default.ea XEX is what we want to boot um, and then we can press the right bumper to come over to the USB 0 and then press the X button and you'll see that the launch.ini got written to the USB. The last thing that I like to do is I like to have dash launch actually installed onto the USB so we can make modifications later. So I select the install this, press A and then I select the USB 0 so it goes right into the root of it, and then I press the X button, 
and it installs Dash Launch locally to the console. Um, so that once we have that CD out, we can still get back to this screen if we wanted. So when I hit A to quit, what should happen is our launch.ini file will take over and tell it that it should boot the freestyle dashboard. Don't freak out if it doesn't immediately boot the first time. Oftentimes I have to actually reboot the console for that to take effect. That might even just be a standard practice. So this time it looks like it didn't. Um, it's, go it's gonna go ahead and launch the Freestyle 3. You may have to do a console reboot there. This is taking significantly longer than normal. I might even have to do a console reboot here. Yeah, my guide button is making the noise but not responding. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna power the console off and then power it back on. And I'll resume the video after I take that call. Okay, now we've turned the console off and we're gonna go ahead and boot it up. Um, and it should boot directly into the freestyle dashboard. So we'll get our normal boot up, our normal logo, and it'll probably sit here because we're booting from USB and not a hard drive for maybe an extra 10, 15 seconds. And then we'll see the freestyle logo. So now that we've got the freestyle dash installed, what we'll do, just resync my controller here, is you can see if you go into the file manager that I've included some other goodies in the DVD. So if you go into the DVD, you can see that there's some emulators, there's some additional tools. These are mostly PC tools. There's the XEX menu. Um, this is the installer program's default itself. So what I generally like to do, first of all, is just because I think the default setup for this is kind of ugly, is go into the skins. And that dream theme that we waited for, go ahead and enable that and then hit back. And then we'll go ahead and we'll reboot now. And it just means reboot the dashboard, not the whole console. But when it loads now, instead of seeing freestyle dash, it's a show its little own dream theme um, icon. And when we see that, uh, and we get the dream theme installed, it's, it's actually pretty cool. So this theme is super customizable. If we go up to the settings and then back to the skins, um, if you go there now, you have this option, customize skin for X. And then if you go over, you've got a ton of different backgrounds you can choose from. And then down towards the bottom here, you've got this edit mode, enter edit mode for Y. And they've got a bunch of pre-configured things changed. So if we hit A for edit tab, I like this one called Blue Fusion. I think it's pretty cool. And then I'm gonna press the over and then select the Blue Fusion icons. Then I'm gonna hit X, apply tab changes. And then I'm gonna hit Y, apply to dash, and then it applies to everything. And it took me a little while to notice this too, but the save is up, indicated up here. So start button to save everything, and then X to save again. Now when we exit out to our dashboard, check that out. I thought it was pretty slick. So inside freestyle dashboard, there's the DVD extract function to rip your originals or your copies to your hard drive. There's the file manager. The biggest additional thing that you really need to know how to do is to go into the setup, go into the content settings, and the manage game pass. From here, what, what you do is you're telling the dashboard where to look for each different type of content. If we back out for just a second um, and you take a look at the library tab, you see you've got an Xbox 360 tab, you've got a live arcade tab, got a homebrew tab, Xbox Classic, and emulators, right? So each of these tabs 
can be pointed at a different place on your hard drive. So there's nothing in my emulators right now. There's nothing in my Xbox Classic right now. So the way that I configure that and tell it where to find the stuff is by going into the settings, content settings, and then manage game paths. From manage game paths, if you want, you can come down here and select, all right, so let's tell it where to find some emulator set. So I'm gonna select emulator. I'm gonna come down on this side. I'm gonna select emulator. The scan depth means how many folders deep to look. I'm gonna set it to three. I'm gonna change, and I hit my change path button. So now what I'm basically doing is saying browse to where your emulators are. Well, I know I have some on the DVD, and then I've got an emus folder here. So there's all my emulators. So I'm gonna hit the Y for select directory. So it's telling it, if I look on the DVD in the emulators folder, that's where I'm gonna find them. Now obviously you would generally wanna copy this stuff to a USB device, to your hard drive, whatever. You're not gonna wanna have that DVD in there all the time. But just to prove the point, I'm gonna hit save. Now it's gonna scan down here. You can see it's scanning for the different emulators. And when I go back up to my library, because I told it where it can find emulators, if I scroll all the way down here, guess what? Now I've got Genesis emulator, MAME emulator, Super Nintendo emulator, Game Boy emulator, regular Nintendo emulator. So I can actually select them from right here. I can launch, and it's actually going to be pointing and reading that from the disk. It's probably not the most advantageous way to do it because it is the DVD, but if we want to, probably most of it will load into memory. So here's the few couple of ROMs that I've got added on there. Um, you, all you have to do is drop additional ROM files into the ROM directory, depending on the emulator. So if I wanted to play some Super Mario Brothers 3, simply select it, and there I am rocking out Super Mario on the, the Xbox 360. So I can go press my guide button and go back to Freestyle Home. And that's pretty much the, the basics of it. From there, you're just gonna wanna figure out where you wanna store stuff, whether it's on your USB or on your internal hard drive and go from there. If you ever really screw it up, you can always use that disk and reinstall Freestyle and kinda start over. So there's my Freestyle coming back with my dream theme applied and there we go. All right, thanks guys.